Jamie Bertram, big hand. Donnie. Okay, so we're going to talk about cities as ecosystems. I'm going to preface this by saying I'm trained as a city planner, um, although I'm kind of not that right now. I'm more of an urban policy wonk, because I like to say. And I studied ecology in college, so I think that's how I figured out this mishmash, and I hope it makes sense to you, as it makes sense to me. So what does it mean, cities as ecosystems? And the first thing I think of when I think of uh, a healthy ecosystem is really that everyone that is in the ecosystem or city has the opportunity to participate and prosper freely. They have the freedom to just be themselves and be who they are and have access to opportunity to be that, whether it's access to a lot of great things. Uh, next, in healthy ecosystems, I find that a lot of them have um, their modo operandi is really that they collaborate and they work together and they see themselves all as parts of the whole, working for one better city together. And that's a really uh, uh, important characteristic. The next thing I see in a lot of healthy ecosystems slash cities is that they encourage innovation. Um, this is the Evergreen Cooperative. It's a worker-owned cooperative in Cleveland, Ohio, which has seen uh, better days in its time. And it's been a really great uh, way for the city to, um, to reduce their unemployment in a time of in hard times. Um, healthy cities slash ecosystems. Uh, the people that live in them have a great understanding that they're all connected to each other. Uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch. The decisions I make, whether it's you know, where I buy my food, where I buy my groceries, where I work, how I get to work, all of those decisions affect everyone in one way or another. And lastly, resilience is really important. This is the South Bronx, uh, which has also seen a lot of hard times. And the people of the South Bronx has really found a way to rise up against a lot of the invasive species, using an ecology term, that have come into their neighborhood, whether it's giant freeways, um, whether it's uh, toxic landfills, and they've really just risen up. So how do we get there? How do we, you know, I'm a city planner, people are always asking me, how do we do that? How do we actually, what do we do? So there's a lot of things, you know, congr congressional grid gridlock, um, you know, Greek is like freaking out right now. Um, Greece, not Greek. <laughs> um, and you know, there's all these things and it's easy to freak out. So what do we do? The first thing is, whose city is this? It's our city, let's take it back. You know, participatory budgeting is a big uh, thing that we can do to really make the city ours. And we, we control the money, we say this is what we want it to be. It's really a reflection of what we want to do and a lot of cities have had success with that. Um, part of taking the city back and making it ours is making sure that kids, no matter what neighborhood they come from, have access to great education um, even before they get to kindergarten. It's making sure that people have access to housing, um, they're not foreclosed on unjustly, that everyone has access to a great park no matter where they live and that the parks are actually designed for the people. Um, so how do we make a city that is uh, that creates a shareable collective um, modus operandi? And uh, at the top, that's in Washington, D.C., they have a fantastic bike sharing system. It's really fun. Um, the bottom left is in Buffalo, New York. They've turned a lot of their vacant land into great things. Um, yay! Uh, so how do we encourage innovation? This is like the most fantastic innovation I love in Fresno. And um, part of encouraging innovation as a city is just to, is to find the good ideas and just do whatever you can to stop the, to stop the obstacles and to, and to let them cultivate and grow. So part of that is stopping regulations and giving them capital. Okay, this is a uh, La Cucina. It's a um, it's a culinary incubator in San Francisco, and part of the innovation they've really provided a lot of capital and space the city has to let uh, restaurateurs really cultivate their business because it's really hard to get startup capital for starting a restaurant. How do we create? Uh, how do we make decisions as cities? that acknowledge that we're all connected and that the decisions we make to drive or you know, whatever we do impact others. And a lot of that I found is through uh, making decisions with data, good data and good uh, stories from people and that's just really important. Uh, that's my husband. Um, so, <laughs> just had to shut that out. So, part of the data, the data story I'm telling is that you know, buy local. That's a big thing now. Everyone's talking about buy local, buy local. Part, the reason it's very successful is that is because we can quantify the effect that buying local has on the economy, and that's really powerful. And data is helping us do that. So, on to resilience. This is Detroit. I was there a few months ago for a conference. I love Detroit. I love Detroit. 
Um, and Detroit has so much grit. You know, the people there, like, really, they they embody resilience. They, they, you know, they're rising from the ashes. They're making it happen. Their economy is getting better, and they just really, uh, they are what we should look to. So, going into resilience a little bit more. Resilience is about diversity, and that's diversity in a few ways. It's economic diversity, but it's also embracing the diversity of cultures that we have. This is Fruitvale Village in Oakland, and um, excuse me. Um, I'm really jet lagged today. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay, we'll just move on. So resilience, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> look it up. Uh, resilience is about adaptation. This is again another example in Oakland. Um, it was a vacant building and a lot of people said, you know, we want this neighborhood to, be, to thrive. Let's start a general store and have a lot of people sell their own local wares in the general store. It'll create a lot of street traffic and they were able to do that. Resilience is about resource efficiency. Um, you know, like, it's, a, it's hard times, but you know, we're, not a, we're a wealthy country. It's just the wealth is allocated in ways I would not prefer. But how can we make sure that we use what we have in the best way? Probably not building million dollar, billion dollar freeways, maybe doing more with bikes. Lastly, we are resilient. We are, um, it's all, you know, what Floyd said before, the cities are all about people that live in them. And this is really our story to tell. Um, I'm a Fresno, but I don't live in Fresno. I'm sorry right now, but I will eventually come back. Um, but you know, we get there, we get to be a better city because we take it on as our own. So I'm just going to leave you with a few lovely websites that I visit a lot that kind of have inspired me and have really um, helped me want to become a better city planner and a better, a better ambassador for cities, and I hope that you will take them on. So thank you. Awesome.